Well, I've got hold of a uh, Glanzer 40 FTE manifold, or it might in fact be a uh, Starlet GT Turbo manifold. Um, just a quick overview really, I bought it off of eBay and it was pretty cheap and it came with the throttle body and the idle air control valve and the intake air temp sensor. It's pretty grotty as you can see, it's quite oily and there's what appears to be sort of dog hair on it. So uh, yeah, it's not really been stored very well and uh, judging by the uh, state of some of the fittings, it's not really been looked after. If you look at the uh, dump valve fitting, that's quite bent off to one side and it's clearly been hit on the end. Uh, thankfully this one for the PCV, that's fine. The uh, fuel pressure regulator one looks okay as well, but uh, if we come around the back, the map sensor one down here at the bottom, that's sort of sl slightly bent off down to the left. It's not horrific um, and it should still work, but uh, yeah, it's not great. And this one here, this, this particular one for the brake booster, that's bent sort of down and over to the right as well. Don't know if you can see that, it's pretty, oh, it's loose as well. Oh, that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, hopefully you can see that. Sort of how bent and round in a circle that turns when you actually move it. That's pretty, pretty biffed and it looks like it's got some PTFE tape. Wow, yeah, some PTFE tape on it. So, uh, yeah, that sort of shows how bent it is really, but maybe I've already refurbished this. You never know. Anyway, I'll check the threads out and see if they're okay. But yeah, that goes back in there for a bit because the good thing about these two is if that does fall over, at least they hit the ground first before this thing does. So the map sensor fitting, that was probably pulled or bent or something. I mean, I don't think it's been in a crash or anything because it would have smashed up a whole bunch of other stuff probably on the way, but yeah, very weird. This one as well, I think this is for the air conditioning, but this one's weird because it's got, not only has it got this on it, goes off to sort of like an air conditioning sort of, sort of solenoid valve. It's also got a smaller one on the bottom here. Um, so let me down, know down in the comments if you know this one I think is Starlet GT rather than Glanza. But anyway, if you know what that's for or if it defines what this came from, let me know in the comments. Also got like the air transfer tube. It's almost like a vacuum block. Um, so yeah, air's fed into there, comes round. The other end goes into the idle air control valve and that's obviously sent through into the manifold through a hole in the end. So yeah. Still got the throttle body on it. Again, that's absolutely disgusting in there, but it is 50 mil diameter throttle body. It moves fairly smoothly, so that's cool. So yeah, 50 diameter throttle body instead of 45 that's found on the 4 EFE. Um, that's kind of about it, really. It is filthy. It needs a clean. The inside is horrific. Let me try and, let me just try and grab a torch. Bear me two seconds. Yep, and we're back. So, yep, torch in there. It's not just like oil and filth, there's, there's, yeah, there's plenty in there. So our degreasing escapades today are going to take quite a while, I think. But yeah, all good fun. So what I'll do is I'll uh, strip all this stuff off it, the stuff that I don't need. So I'll take the idle air control valve off, intake temp sensor, and the... Uh, larger throttle body off that'll allow me to clean it a bit easier on the inside i might as well take the air tube off the back as well because i don't need that if i'm not having any of the other stuff i'll leave these on even though they're going to be coming off and being replaced and the reason i'll do that is uh at least if anything happens during the process it should help protect the little map sensor boss so i'll crack into that give it a bit of wd-40 and uh we'll strip it down get the bits off so that's the throttle body off it's uh series of four 12 mil bolts or say 12 mil hexes which is an m8 bolt and that's the difference when people say it's a 12 mil well it's a 12 mil spanner or socket required but the actual thread is m8 so there's four of those and uh, then the throttle body comes off it actually came off quite easily this gasket hopefully that'll peel off reasonably well or not that's off it's actually in pretty good condition. This doesn't appear to have had any sort of marks on it at all. The uh, quadrant wheel on the side, that's all uh, nice and straight as well. So that's a godsend. 
doesn't look to be any real damage or anything to it so yeah that's pretty good so yeah that can go in the pile of things i might do something with later or uh keep it for another project or sell it but at the moment it's not going back on this one because the uh idle air control valve is different set up on the 4 efe that's it's all on the bottom of the throttle body down here whereas this has got one on the side it also has a uh, sort of wax stat or a thermostatic control in here so that's the idle air control valve off uh, it fits into a uh, hole in the side of the plenum there just underneath the uh, welch plug or core plug they they tap in to essentially seal that end bolts on with two m6 fasteners above it on either side um there are 10 mil hex or span you need the other weird thing is when i've pulled this off this came out and it just had ptfe tape around it now i'm sure there's a groove hidden somewhere under this that's supposed to have an o-ring in it so whoever well let's just say whatever genius moments were going on when they were fixing this there was plenty of ptfe decided that this yeah this should go back in with ptfe and this should go back in ptfe i mean that's off um like i say four m6 bolts two for the idle air control valve two for the transfer tube or vacuum pipe block distribution thing that goes around the back again not in the greatest of shape but certainly serviceable anyway that's off. I'm going to have a check and make sure this, there's no way you just jam that in there PTFE. There must just be an O-ring missing from this. So I'll, I'll clean that one up and that can again go in the pile of things I'll look at later. Well, we're back. And sure enough, underneath the uh, genius PTFE idea is an O-ring. So I can only assume that's too flat or too thin. I suppose it's better than just putting RTV on it or something. But yep, there you go. That's what you're supposed to seal with. So yeah. Just the intake air temp sensor to remove. I've already cracked it loose. It was a 19mm spanner on that. I believe the thread's M16 by 1.5. I've got a hole. Actually, I can get my thread gauges out and measure that in a bit. So, yeah, I'll measure that up. Because uh, I won't be using this hole um, for my build. So, I need to blank this off. And you can do that quite easily with a plug. So, yeah, that's that out of there. Came out quite easily. Obviously, it's got a copper washer seal. Stops all the lovely boost going out and all the vacuums going in. And, well, there it is. Another legendary piece of Toyota. Just one other thing. When you crack this loose, you're obviously going to be pushing down with your spanner. Just be careful that you don't swing through and uh, break off the fuel pressure regulator nozzle. So obviously that's one of the ports that uh, feeds vacuum or boost reference to your fuel pressure regulator. So you don't want to snap that off because it's just a piece of steel tube press fitted into that. So if you snap it off, you'll have to drill it out and then plug it and then get a source from somewhere else, which isn't too bad. I mean, this thing's got so many ports on it, which is the reason I chose to use it because it's got plenty of ports. So yeah, just be careful of that. Obviously you can put the spanner on vertically and pull towards yourself but you've got to be careful as well what you push on as well when you're grabbing a manhandle this thing that you don't end up breaking something off so yeah there we are one more to come out and then we can start so that's out now again that was a 10 mil spanner to get that out and you can see well hopefully you can see how bent and wobbly that is when you turn it it's it's horrific it's like a dog leg that thing it's been biffed on the engine don't know if it's going to focus or not, maybe some photographs later, but it's been biffed on the end and it's completely blocked up with God knows what, so, yep, got a good one. Well, that's the gasket off. Started off using the Stanley scraper, but then in the end I just had to take the blade out of it. Once you get it under an edge, just carried on sliding it off, basically. Wasn't too bad, it does make some horrific noises, but it gets rid of the majority of it quite quickly. Then you just have to concentrate on the worst areas. Obviously, you've got to be careful because you're using quite a hard steel blade against reasonably soft aluminium. It's come up pretty good, though. There's nothing really stuck on it. No pitting and uh, no damage or anything, so it looks pretty good.
duty my ass. Says it's a citrus cleaner. Well, it smells citrusy at least. I'll leave it to soak, see what happens. I'll spray that down and go for a cup of coffee, I think. See you in a bit. Quick update, bought this stuff from Wix to degrease it and it is absolutely useless. So, uh, I guess we just... There you go. So, I mean, I wasn't expecting to get a huge amount of the caked on stuff off. They've been there for years with just one quick spray, but I was expecting it to at least dilute some of the stuff out from down the ports. It's done something, but I mean, you know, just using petrol on it probably would have been better just to dissolve out all the dried grease and cake and caked on junk. But yeah, I had to scrub it with a wire brush and another scouring pad sort of thing. So yeah, I think we're going to try the traditional route now and uh, not too bothered about the actual finish as long as it's clean on the inside to get rid of all that dirt and grime and crap and God knows what there was in there. I mean, last thing you want is that dissolving off and then going into your engine. So outside of it, again, the rest of the engine isn't hugely cleaner than that. And by the time you've got all the uh, fuel injectors and wires and pipes and all the exciting throttle linkage and stuff going on here you won't even see that anymore but at the end of the day i'd like it to be cleaner than it was so if you've got any uh tips or tricks or the uh the stuff you like to use chuck that down in the comments as well um we could all do with a bit of help sometimes so yeah i've got some gunk i've got some plain old brake cleaner i've even tried wonder wheels on this stuff before and wonder wheels works okay on the aluminium stuff but you do have to be careful on the zinc plated fasteners because it tends to sort of dissolve that off in quite a spectacular way so not exactly what i want to do but at the end of the day i certainly need to clean the inside more than this is the outside i can live with but uh yeah we'll go from there so once she's dried off we'll be able to go out with something paraffin or petrol based yep so i'll give it a go with some brake cleaner Well, that escalated quickly, so gave it a go with gunk degreaser. That didn't do bugger all. Uh, now we're on to the alloy wheel cleaner and the jet wash, so we'll see what's left of it after I've finished playing with it this time around. But the inside's looking a bit better. The outside, I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of these uh, grey or dark brown spots, whatever they are. I think it's a mixture of corrosion and dirt that, unless I acid dip the thing, it's not going to get rid of it so I'm gonna give it a crack with some aloe wheel cleaner which is either acid or alkali who knows it's probably written on the bottle should have read it but yeah if it's gonna do anything that'll be it then I'll give it a blast with a jet wash and I think that'll be it for today so from where we started this morning you can see the throttle bodies in the original condition it was it was pretty grimy and grotty at the end of the day aluminium does corrode so uh, it's not going to be able to get rid of all of it, but once the manifold had dried off, it certainly looked a lot better. I mean, there's still plenty of grey sort of stained corrosion on the manifold, but I don't think I'm really going to get that off, like I said, without a serious acid bath. And the big problem with that is it's going to start to quite quickly dissolve all of the zinc off of the fasteners that are in it, and I can't get some of these out. These ones are pressed in, three of them, and the other ones do unscrew, but that's not going to be possible so I'm going to go with it as it is I'm quite happy with the results to be honest with you it's uh, it's 10 times better than where it was when we started this morning uh, certainly a lot cleaner and the in inside of it actually came up well so so somewhere between those five different methods rinsing off in between each um, it ended up like this and it did look pretty dull and grey still but once I dried it off and uh, the moisture had dried out of these sort of more severe corroded patches um, it actually came up looking reasonably good for its age I mean at the end of the day the one that came off it looked like this anyway so try and get a bit of light on it the one that came off it sort of looks like that so but yeah it's a definite improvement it's certainly not brand new but then if it was did look brand new it wouldn't match the rest of the stuff that's on the car so i'm quite happy that it uh seems to look okay 
again it's come up quite well you can see here uh, there's a bit of a biff there on the top of it so yep this thing's been kicked around a bit but at the end of the day it's fundamentally sound so yeah i think a bit more of a clean up i've got to decide what i'm going to do with the idle air control valve hole as well because that's not actually threaded it's just a straight hole uh, i can either put a welsh plug in it like they did at the toyota factory um but there's always the worry that that gets blown out or sucked in um, under, under vacuum. So, uh, yeah, there's always the the fingers crossed for that. Although I do remember I've done this before and you have to hit it in with a two kilo club hammer to get it to go in there. So it should stay in. But the other option is to thread it and tap it or fix something in there. So basically end up being a uh, metal rod with a O-ring on it and some sort of plate to bolt it on here to actually hold it in. But again, not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that there. So that's just the clean up for today. And I think it's actually come up pretty good. So, yep. Till next time. My name's Dan. This is Dan91's Garage. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode.